Welcome to the People's Show. My name is Comrade Kolete Obwade, and today on the People's Show, we're going to learn something special. Today, we're going to learn how to reprogram our minds. That's why today the topic or the title for our program is Reprogramming the African Mind. And guess what? We're going to talk to a holistic life coach who we're going to call in the Netherlands, who would help us to understand. Her name is Annie Kush. Her name is Annie Kush, and she's a holistic life coach, a growth mentor. And she's going to help us to understand how our minds have been programmed to think and behave in a certain way, and what we can do to reprogram our minds in a certain way where we can manifest anything we want. And you know, for us in Africa, it's very important that we reprogram our minds from mental slavery, from negativity, and to turn it all around to positive, to abundance, and to wellness. So don't go away. We'll be right back. The People Show will be right back. Studios to view. The truth is here in your eyes. Annie, please, can you give us some light on what exactly is wrong with us as African people? Um, do I really want to use the word wrong? I think um, we have allowed ourselves to become victims of exploitation. Mm. Uh, exploitation that has been going on since time immemorial. Yeah. Um, we've been robbed of our history and we have willingly embraced the culture, the ideas of our oppressors. And at the same time, within ourselves, we are divided and hence have been conquered. Mm. I mean, this, this is a subject we can, we can tackle from so many different angles. If you take Af West Africa, for instance, if you go into history, you find out that um, Nigeria or Ghana or Togo or Gambia did not exist before. It was yeah. West Africa. Yeah. And somewhere in the 18th century, there's something called the Berlin Conference. Yeah. The Western countries got together, went into a meeting and sat on a table and decided how they were going to divide Africa amongst themselves so that they could take control of us and our resources. Yeah, exactly. But one of the things we forget is that the biggest asset they stole from us is our minds, mm -hmm. not even so much the materials. Because ask yourself, if you are in your home, right, and can a thief come into your house and rob you if, you are, if your mind is in place, if you've protected your home well? I don't think mm -hmm. they can. Yeah. So in a way, we've allowed them to do that. And they ha it hasn't been easy for them because they've tried to wipe us out through many things like creating of HIV, creating of Ebola, to wipe us out. But somehow some of them even call us Africans, black people, weeds, you know, mm -hmm. so it is it, 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 it is really, really, really deep. And then to bring it personal, instead of just pointing fingers, is that take Ghana. Yeah. To the outside world, to the Caucasian, we are black people. Whether you come from Nigeria or Ghana or Uganda, you're a black person. Exactly. But in Ghana, we are busy with you are an Ashanti, you are a Ghan, you are an Ever, you are an Ofna. So we are contributing to our own downfall in a way. Yes, we are greatly because the tactic has always been divide and, and conquer, divide, rule and conquer. So we've been divided through religion and we ourselves, we even have this thing where when you're like me and you have exposure to the Western world and the African, average African would be like, well, you're lucky you're living outside. And I'm like, well, I wake up every day and I leave my home and I'm reminded because of the way I'm treated, I'm black, that I'm different. Yeah. That I don't even have the right to breathe air. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But 
we ourselves oh this one is copper color this one is light-skinned this one is that and you under, when, when you start understanding this it's incredible how petty we are and so if we are petty to ourselves doesn't that give room for us to be ruled and conquered it does because we've created the opening for others to take advantage of our weakness because it is a weakness and we reach it is a weakness it is a weakness and it's a weakness of mind more than anything mm. else and so we look up there and i think as we were discussing earlier before i'm like wealth is always determined any parts of the world by assets that we have yet we have a lot of continent to be called a third world country meanwhile if we're going by the rules that the world has placed that the very caucasian who oppress us has placed Africa is, shouldn't be a third world country because we should be measured by our assets. But we even ourselves have accepted calling ourselves third world country. And that is also programming. Because yeah. the minute you wake up and you're like, hello, hold on a minute. Um, I have all these natural resources and that is what actually counts for wealth. So how dare you call me a poor country, a, a poor country. nation. Yeah. Yeah. That, that alone changes the dynamics. Because it gives you a certain form of self-worth. Where you're like, hello, no, 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 no. You may have all the artificial stuff, the buildings and the cars, but I got what makes the world move, turn around. Because exactly. in every phone, the substance, the mineral needed to create the phones that we use, the Android phones, is in Africa. That's true. There's gold in every material. There's silver, there's copper. To, to, to have electricity, copper. So basically... You're understanding that our state of mind, our mindset mm -hmm. is actually our downfall. Mm. You that know, is how um, simple it is. Mm. You, you remind me of what Steve Biko said that the um, mentality of the press is the weapon of um, the imperialist. I'm not saying it the way he said it, but I think what he's trying to say is. The weapon of the oppressor is the mentality of the oppressed. Yes. yes, it's true. Because, I mean, think about it. How do you tame a dog or um, a horse? I'm not comparing us to dogs or horses. But you create a certain scenario. And if the person believes in it or not, I mean, for instance, let's take this for example. When you go to school, what history did you learn? Uh, we learn about um, uh, the world. We learn about British history and everything, and a little bit of our own. You never told us that we used to be the masters of the world. You never hear that. You have to find that one out yourself. Yes. Do you think um, this mentality or consciousness has... Uh, do you think we can do something about it? again. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We're, we're, we're experiencing very bad techni technical challenges right now, I suppose. Yeah. Are we, um, what's his name? Randy? Of course. Um, mm -hmm. Of course we can. So, so there's something we can do about, about our mentality. mentality. Absolutely. Um, it starts with knowing thyself. It starts um, with knowing ourselves. Yeah, yes. And you have to, how do you start knowing yourself? We really need to be critical about this. Because um, when it comes to knowing yourself, mm -hmm. let's take religion, yeah? Yeah. Um, your mother, your father, their parents, the ones before them, um, have been trained to take the Bible. And most of the time, the Bible that we are praying to uh, is a white Jesus with blonde blue eyes. Mm. And it actually actively says in the Bible that some people are cursed. But ask yourself, how much self-worth would you feel if you're praying to a God that doesn't even look like you? Today, we have children who grew up in the, in the U.S. or anywhere in the Western world, and they are used to seeing white kids on TV the whole time. Mm -hmm. When Oprah became very famous, it actually changed the dynamics of a lot of black people because they started seeing people who look like them, which gives you self-worth. Yeah. The other question we don't ask ourselves is, the person that has robbed me and still to today robs me, are they really going to give me something that is going to benefit me? Or are they going to give me something that oppresses me? We, we learn their history. We learn 
in religion through the books they have written, reading, write it. We learn about our history from their perspective, not yeah. from the African perspective. Mm -hmm. Everything we do is what how they want us to see ourselves. I mean, I'm going to take it to something completely off base before we even get there. Look at today. Um, they call it BB, the, the Brazilian butt, <laughs> has become something that even black people are doing, where we were naturally born with natural curves. Yeah. The white woman or white man has created this idea where now black people are being mutilated because we are following their dynamics, their perceptions, their perspective. Meanwhile, we were born naturally that way. Black people putting stuff in their lips. So what can we do? Um, it starts with, you know, we don't like reading. We need to start digging into, we need to start asking questions. Because even when you look at our governments, like you mentioned Steve Biko. Yeah. We are fools if we believe that any of our people in power are actually there to help us. It is bullshit. It is nonsense. They yeah. are put there to serve the Western world. The Western world will crash today without Africa. But we brought people into power because of our division. Mm -hmm. And thereby we are conquered. We brought people into power who come there to benefit themselves because they don't give a shit about you or me. They come there because the white man has promised them a certain amount of benefits. Yeah. Which, because they are so narrow-minded, they will take that. For instance, we have money. I, I, I mean, I was reading something about, um, was it the, 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 the oil deal? Yeah. yeah I think the uh, oil was sold to Norway for a couple of, I think less than 200 million, just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And now they have gone around the world lobbying because we are being pushed to an, a new electrical world where fossil fuel is going to be ruled out. Mm -hmm. They've come back. They said they couldn't find anyone to finance it. So now I think parliament makes a deal, whether the opposition or the sitting power, to rebuy this deal that we sold for less than 200 for over a billion. Hmm. You sit down and you're thinking, in your right mind, Something if they couldn't wrong. find funding, you have to buy it less. Yeah. You give it to them. Because at the end of the day, when you pay the billion, they're, they're going to take a loan to buy it back. And then when you have it back, which money are you going to use to actually get win your oil? It doesn't make sense. So if you sit down, you realize that, oh, the people involved, this is a deal. A deal is being done. We're going to take the money. We're going to spread it amongst ourselves because why can we not take this money to, to change our country? Yeah. And I mean, then let's bring it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to ask you something. Um, is it a lost cause? Absolutely not. It's not? It's, the, the, it's not. There's nothing like a lost cause. There's, um, um, it's, 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 we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. And the work we need to do is that we need to understand the language of frequency. Okay. We need to understand the language of energy. Okay. We need to understand that collectively, when we think in a certain direction, we are create we are creating that narrative. Mm. Um, we need to understand that we have the power within us, although it seems very gloomy on the outside. The example is that somebody may be like, okay, yeah, but I'm very positive all the time. How is that going to put KK on my plate in the morning? The question is, you see a family, um, maybe there are five children born. Mm -hmm. They go to the same schools. They have the same benefits, yet some succeed and some fail. Yeah. That should true. tell you that it has something to do with the individual itself. Mm. And as we we're talking again, you see, this thing is so deep that, like, there's DNA. I was saying before, we have exactly 46 DNA strands, molecules. Mm -hmm. But each of them have about 240 chromosomes, 40 million chromosomes. Yeah. But taking away chromosomes, let's stick to the DNA. If we have 46 DNA strands, 46 DNA strands in our, in, in our body, one DNA has the memory capacity of one petabyte. One petabyte is equal to one million gigabytes. This is how much memory we are working with. 
And everything that has been, everything that will always be is within ourselves. We just have to tap into it. So mm. something has to be activated within us. At the same time, we have 14 generations of DNA encoded into our body. So everything, the beatings that our ancestors, 14 generations till now, their poverty, the struggling is still in us. So we will automatically choose for a certain way of thinking, which does not necessarily serve us. Because, because of the programming. programming. Is the programming. Okay. So it is not by accident. It is by design that we operate the way we do. But when you start critical thinking, you know, you need to start asking yourself critical questions. Why am I this way like you're doing? How does this serve us? How do we change our direction mm -hmm. when we are even divided in our own country? Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. So is it impossible to change? No, it is impossible to change if we keep at the pace we are going. At the pace at which we're going, it's impossible because we have discrimination within ourselves. But yeah. in the bigger picture, it doesn't even matter. Mm. And, and, and we are talking about Earth alone. Now, let's go to a little bigger. We have a solar system. Some don't believe in it because, again, we've been brainwashed to believe the Bible is literal instead of seeing it as a metaphoric book or even an economical book because everything is in there depending on how you read it. Mm -hmm. We have in our galaxy 12 star systems. Yeah. Earth is the seven star system and everything I'm sharing is peer reviewed. It's on the net. In this day and age, nobody needs to be ignorant. Or oh, there's no excuse for ignorance. So we have the seven star system. There are other beings who have been here for millennia, and even our history says that we are over millions of years old, but we've been told we exist a few thousands, and people still believe Adam and Eve are the first creation. But then mm -hmm. if you ask them critical question, if Adam and Eve are brother and sister, and we both know that you know when we mate with each other, <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. here. You know, it, it forms deformities. It creates deformities. Yeah. But we have other beings in this galaxy who are colonizing stars systems. They are creating stars and they are creating worlds. We wow. are here being divided by not only color and race, but within ourselves, you are chocolate, you are caramel, you are ever you are gun. You no, are when you think of it on that scale <laughs> It's laughable. Like, it's like, come on. What are you talking about? Yeah. We are there. You are a woman. I'm a man. We are so divided. And when you look at it from that angle, yeah, we are the lost cause. Yeah. yeah. But, but um, you, 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 you tell me this. Um, a lot of people, there's a lot of um, some awakening going on. If you go on the internet, you see a lot of... Um, African people all around the world, they're saying the same thing, only it is not harmonized, it is not um, truly collective. Do you think that is a sign that some positive vibe or frequency is on ascendancy? Actually, it's a fact, um, you know, um, then we go again to science because actually everything is everything is science. Everything, everything is, 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 is quantum physics. We are living in the, in the age of Aquarius. Every, you know, it's cyclical when you go through astrology okay. and we're living in an age where we are supposed to awaken. Humanity is supposed to awaken. Wow. So it is within us to awaken, except let's not under underestimate the forces that are fighting against us and on a larger scale, um, looking at humanity, there's only 1%, be it black, white, Caucasian, whatever, there's only 1% that really have access to this knowledge we are talking about. So on the bigger level, both the white man, the black man, we are all enslaved. Hmm. The white man is, is trapped in the sense that they've been made to have some kind of feeling of superiority, priority. Okay. But even here, the crisis is hitting here. There are people who cannot pay their rents. We have food banks. And coincidentally, I even have, I'm having a meeting with one of uh, the teachers of my daughter. Mm -hmm. Where she showed a video to the children in class about a film. They went to someone in Uganda. You know, they're showing poor children who have no school, no food. And then they build the most shabby kind of 
building they can which i'm sure you know of for their kids so their kids are now in school and then they, they film them they have some you know clothes on and they have a party and a graduation so my daughter came home she's like hey mommy and she's mind you one of the only african kids in her school mm. perhaps two of them and in her class the only one she said hey mommy today i saw kids that look like me i'm like oh really nice um where were they well my teacher said somewhere from africa how did they look like well they look very poor how did you feel i felt very bad she said oh. so i went to i was quite shocked because i'm like i can't believe that in 2022 this is still what is being shown to kids and mm. i my question is when you show the positive show the negative because yeah. there is a balance there are rich kids in africa and i tell them look we have schools that people are paying three thousand dollars a term they're like what really that's yeah. outrageous. I'm like, to some people, it's normal when you live in when you live in certain parts of Africa. It's normal to pay those kind of schools. Yeah. It's, it's actually, actually it's more, actually. actually. There are actually there schools, schools that are paying more than $8,000. Dollars. You yeah. see? So, I, Africa, I, yeah. so a friend of mine was like, we need to video this. To so anyway, I, let's not even go too much in that. So they have, I ask myself, look at the Emirates. They have a lot of money, right? Mm. Do you see them getting up and going to a, a different nation to say we are going to help them there? So I asked them a question. I'm like, I'm an African. I live in the Netherlands. Just about two weeks ago, coming from the supermarket, I saw a charity foundation. They asked me to buy something out of the supermarket to, do, to donate it so that they give it to white people living in this country who cannot afford food. Mm. So I'm like, imagine I film it and then take it to Ghana and say this is the Netherlands. How would people think of here? You understand? Yeah. So they have been programmed. So I'm like, if you charity starts at home, we, when, when we, they don't help us in Africa by bringing charity, because I'm like, first of all, you take people away from their culture. We are, we are being, we are learning things that do not help us. So I'm asking after they finish the school, are you going to give them jobs or are they going to finish school learning your system? And if you are so helpful, why do they need visa to come here? If you really want to help so much, you should give them the school. When they said they want to come, oh, come on, come here, give them a house, give them a job. So I'm like, don't do that. You do that out of feeling, oh, I'm superior. I have so much. I'm going to help the poor African kids because they can't survive with me. I'm like, you know what? If you want to help, find out how they became poor in the first place. Because you're going to find out that your very governments have imposed democracy on our on our governments because then they know they can put the wrong people in power who's going to sell the ideology. So you drain 100 percent and then people like you keep the draining, keep the oppression in place because you so-called come in with your petty 0.1 percent out of the hundred that you've taken and then create the idea that you're helping us in Africa. But wow. actually you're helping oppress us. Yeah. So you want to help find out how we got up, how, how we got there in the first place. Good. Um, and you are a holistic life coach, a growth mentor. Now, if I'm an individual and I'm watching this video, I'm looking at what can I do to, first of all, tune in into the right frequency. What can I do to start seeing that I'm the one creating my reality? What can I do to see the programming that I have been programmed that is influencing my behavior? What can I do to reprogram myself? Well, um, I'm going to give you a few techniques, I suppose. Um, it's not easy. If I should tell you that it's easy, it is easy. And again, it's not easy because it takes practice, but there's something, I, I one of my favorite easy. authors, mm -hmm. one of my favorite authors is called Neville Goddard. And maybe you can put in your disclaimer, they can, you, can, you can get this on YouTube. It's called Feeling is the Secret. Okay. Now, it's also, for, especially for religious people can also use this. What does it mean feeling is the secret? There's a frequency. Mm -hmm. And this frequency, this God that we pray, and there's one of my favorite authors is also Billy Carson. He explains that we pray wrongly. We go and pray, we're like, oh, please give me this. But when you understand that you, the human being, are like a receiver and a co-creator with the energy force, which some call God, which some call Jesus, which some call source, mm. any name you give it, it doesn't change its power. 
but it is all that is. It doesn't differentiate between positive and negative, which will explain to you why someone who is very evil will still thrive because they believe in what they are doing and tap into that energy that is non-biased. So you cannot ask the energy to give you something. You make up your mind that I want this and then you have to be in harmony with your thoughts and your feelings. So therefore, if I want 10,000, if I want $10,000 um, or CDs or pounds or euros, if I'm thinking, oh, I want, I want is something I don't have. It's always in the future. So now, how do you get this? So you, you can't create something if you are not it. So if that's I the say, energy. The I, energy have $10, I have $10,000. I have $10,000. But if you have the ten thousand dollars, you might think, "Who am I? Who am I fooling about?" That's because we've been trained <laughs> to see with our three D eye, instead of going to the feeling. But if you really had ten thousand dollars, how would you feel? This is where imagination and visualization and dreaming big, which we all these are all things we they've been used for, we, has been used for us, comes into play. If you had ten thousand dollars, you probably change the way you walk. Yeah. yeah you probably talk differently. Yeah. You probably have a big smile on your face. Yeah. So uh, if the you whole energy channel, will change. You can, I can even see a smile from you right now. Imagine <laughs> you have that 10,000. Yeah. This is how you tap into that energy. Yeah. You tap into that energy by becoming that which you want to be as though you already are without wow. paying attention to how long it's taking. And this is where it's like you plant the seed. The seed is your thoughts. The seed is your thoughts or the seeds are your thoughts. And the field is your imagination. Mm. So you have, you have seed, you have soil. So you put the seed in your mind. Your thought is in your mind. Now, when you plant the seed, you nurture it by giving it water. The water is the feeling and the anticipation, because when you put the seed in the soil, you're expecting it to come up. You're anticipating. When you plant tomato seed, you haven't seen the tomato yet. You haven't seen the tomato plant yet, but somehow you have unwavering faith that is coming. What is the difference? Tell me yeah. between the seed that you actually put in the soil and the thought that you choose to think about in your mind. The they are both thing. invincible. Yeah. Once they go in the ground, yeah. but there's something that you do, you keep nurturing it and you nurture your planted seed with your emotions by mm. feeling yeah. that you already are by seeing that tomato. If yeah. you should go every day and you'd be like, man, this tomato, I planted you two days ago. You're still not up. <laughs> you walk away, you give it time yeah. and it will surely pop up, but you cannot plant negativity in your head as to man, I don't have money and expect to get the money. You're saying I don't have money. So you won't have it. You're creating more. See everything you think about, be it good or bad, you create, wow. especially when it's backed by feeling. Annie, um, it's been like a whole education. Unfortunately, that's all time can give us today. And we know that Annie is a very busy person a holistic life coach, a group mentor, but we just hope that she would make us available on another session because this is so deep. And I believe this, the, the kind of education that I personally need, and I'm sure millions of you out there watching me right now, this is the kind of education. Ali Kush, I want to thank you immensely for creating the time out of your busy schedule to help us to understand why we Africans are at this stage of our spiritual evolution, if I can put it that way. But I'm sure that you come our way another time to help us, to give us in-depth understanding and knowledge that is going to help us to turn around, turn our world around and create that abundance and prosperity and peace that we believe we deserve. Thank you again for being on the People Show, Annie Kush. Thank you so much. I love I love this. And yes, I, I mean, this is something I love. And I can say with myself as an example, it takes 
21 days intensive training to three months to actually change your mindset and manifest anything that you want to manifest. Wow. And so I don't know what your audiences want, but they can call us up on the challenge. Um, it, it takes up to 15 to 30 minutes a day training. Mm. And within 21 days, one can really change the way they think, shift your paradigm, we call it. But like you said, you know, we don't have too much time and it's quite deep. It's, it's a deep subject and, you know, we can go through it and any direction, but I believe there's hope for humanity if we just open our minds to what we really are, who we are, what we are capable of. So I would love to do this again. And um, thanks for having me. All too soon. Our time is up. I wish we could still keep going and going and going so that we can learn more about reprogramming our minds so that we can transform our reality. I want to say a big thank you to our holistic life coach, Annie Kush, who has taken time out of her busy schedule to give us all this information, this knowledge, this enlightenment, this wisdom. And we want to say a big thank you to her for sharing, because we all need the knowledge. We all need the information so that we can transform, reprogram our minds and transform our reality. I know that maybe another time we'll, she'll come again on the People Show to help us so that we can still, because it's not a one day job in reprogram, reprogramming our minds, it's gonna take time and we need to keep going till we are, become masters of our world. And that's all time has given us. My name is Comrade Kolete Obuade, and until I come your way again, is the People's Show. And remember, the truth is always here in your eyes. Studios to view. The truth is here in your eyes.